done. Good. All right, guys. Today, we are looking at the difference between our function and the inverse function. So who in, who in chemistry might hear a problem like this? It's um, 27 degrees Celsius. Convert that to find what it is in Fahrenheit. Would that be something useful to do? I feel like that might be a question you have to figure out. Okay. So this, this is our function. The Fahrenheit degree is equal to whatever the Celsius degree measure is, uh, temperature, times 1.8 plus 32. That's how you would find it. Okay. So, and we could see this because one thing we know is that uh, water freezes at what degree Celsius? Zero. Celsius is based on water. So I know that Celsius, zero Celsius is when it freezes. 100 Celsius is when it what? Boils. So really, a lot happens there. Celsius is based on how water behaves. Fahrenheit's based on some other stuff. Um, but I know that, look, I know that when Celsius is zero degrees, water freezes. Fahrenheit, what is the temperature in Fahrenheit where water freezes? 32 degrees. Now watch. Look what would happen if I plugged in zero for Celsius. Zero times 1.8? Zero. Plus 32? 32 degrees. So this is, this is the function to find the Fahrenheit temperature based on Celsius. Okay? And you're great. You, know, you, walk into, you walk into the chemistry class, you're like, I got this function. I got this function ready. All I need is my Celsius measures. I'll find the Fahrenheit. But then, you know, Miss Cap is like, or Miss Rushing, you guys are rushing. Mm -hmm. Miss Rushing's like, a map of back's like, definitely. You'd be like, oh, I decided today not to do Celsius measures. I'm going to give you all the Fahrenheit measures and you have to convert to Celsius. You'd be like, oh, crap. Well, how am I going to do that? I'm plug in like a Fahrenheit over here and somehow work it out. You see how that wouldn't be helpful? Exactly. And that's where we're going to go. Because what you're saying to minus 32 and work it out so you isolate the Celsius, that's finding the inverse. What we're going to find out right now with the regular function, you have a Celsius value. You have a Celsius value. You plug it into the function. Boom. You get the output, the output of your Fahrenheit value. You see? That's what we're doing. Now, the opposite direction would be what? You have your Fahrenheit value given. You put it through the inverse, and you end up with the Celsius value. You see how that would be useful to go the other direction based on the information you have, right? That's just all we're doing with the inverse. It actually is really useful. If anyone's going to go into engineering, the inverse is very helpful because it's like, okay, I boil this certain chemical to get this output. What if I'm measuring just the output to see how much chemical I put in there? It's the other direction. So all we have to do is take this. Let's call this our y. That's our output. We call that our x plus 32. Let's find the inverse of this. That would be our inverse function. Then we could plug in some Fahrenheit's to get our Celsius. We can go the other direction. So let's see. All right. So we have this. All we have to really accomplish for the standard is learning the process. So we flip the x and the y. And then I want to solve for the y. So let's work from the outside in. What should I move first? Good. Minus 32, then it's x minus 32. Everyone okay with me skipping that step? Exactly. Because it's y times 1.8, instead I'm going to divide. And I'll show this step just so that no one gets confused. So look, we just found that. And now let's uh, switch back to what we were having. We were trying to figure it out so we can find the Celsius. So these cancel. The Celsius measure is equal to the Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. This is our inverse. It's going the other direction. Sometimes it's a little tricky to figure out, well, which one goes back in for Celsius or Fahrenheit, but just know you're going to end up with the opposite output. Now we can input a Fahrenheit degree, and we can have the output of our uh, Celsius degree. So we're going to be able to put in the Fahrenheit, go through our inverse, find our Celsius. So how about we try this one? Let's do, um, okay, we're going to put in a Fahrenheit degree of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead and use our inverse function now. Plug in your Fahrenheit, see what that value is of Celsius. It's going the opposite direction. 
Maybe you already know it, but I want you to plug it in. So the Celsius is equal to 212 minus 32 divided by 1.8. What is the Celsius degree? That's just a couple steps on the calculator. I hope that's not so bad. You could do it, man. It's what? You could do it, man. Yeah, you could. You could. 212 minus 32, 180. 180. Divided by 1.8, 100 degrees. Wait. Uh, whoops. Oops. 100 degrees Celsius. Let's see about that. I put in. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Isn't that where water boils? It is where water boils. I got an output of 100 degrees Celsius. Do those seem to be equivalent values, equivalent temperatures? They're equivalent. They're just in different scale, Fahrenheit versus Celsius. All right, you guys now see kind of why this might be helpful? Okay. If you're like looking, okay, how many ticket sales do I need to sell to make profit? Instead, you could say, how much profit do you want to make? And find how many ticket sales you need. Instead of ticket sales, work it out, work it out to show profit. You can now go, I want this profit, how many ticket sales do I need? It's just going the other direction, focusing on the other variable. Okay? That's what we gotta do. Is everyone okay with the process? How we flipped it, worked it out? Okay. That's the scope of we're gonna cover for uh, the quiz and review tomorrow. Sorry, don't freak out. It's okay. The review tomorrow on quiz Friday. Thumbs up, sideways down. Okay. You guys cold? Is that it? I get cold.